Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper into credit and also using debt. Debt, we can call it leverage, where you're bringing some amount of money to the table and that's your equity piece. And then whether it's private lenders, private investors, or a bank or a credit card that is extending a debt through promissory notes, lines of credit, other ways to, to look at it, that is leverage. Leverage always increases the risk versus reward of your business opportunity. And kind of the way that it always goes. With debt, it's a usually a fixed or reasonably variable interest rate that can be cheaper than finding private investors. We call this the leverage part, where as long as you're doing better than your cost of capital, your profitability and your personal return continues to improve. So leverage is a great thing as long as you're successful, but if things are not going well, those lenders may have the right to not only take your business assets, but if you provided a personal guarantee, they may get to your assets as well. With an LLC, and this is a big reason to do an LLC, it's called a limited liability company because your liabilities are limited to what you've put into the company plus a second component. What you've agreed to guarantee for the company. And this is where most lenders, most banks, credit card, some private lenders will require a personal guarantee from you. No matter what happens with the business, you're still paying back that credit. So a really important thing for you to know if you're thinking, oh, I can just borrow it under the LLC and I'm not going to be responsible. It can be true. It can also very much not work out that way, especially when you're dealing with the financial institutions. They're almost always asking for a personal guarantee. With the personal guarantees, they're looking at your personal credit. This is why it's so important for you to maintain a good financial record for yourself, paying all of your debts, maintaining and improving your credit score. At the end of the day, your personal credit history can absolutely affect your financing opportunities and actually what's there to fund your business as well. It's all not just, well, can you buy another personal vehicle? It's actually, can you even open up your business and get that leverage so you can maximize your returns based on your success? When it comes to the business credit, Usually it is under the business's name, under your LLC's name, and there's some credit worthiness that goes along with an LLC. There's a Dun & Bradstreet credit rating, and it's different than your personal credit report, but there are business credit reports. So if you're looking to long-term really leverage and rely on the business credit, doing your Dun & Bradstreet report, which isn't done on every company, you have to volunteer the information about your company on an ongoing basis to set up your business credit rating and then improve it. But at the end of the day, your separate business has its own credit profile. And whether or not you have to personally guarantee, eventually, hopefully, you don't have to personally guarantee, it is 100% of the time going to come down to creating that business credit profile for your LLC. Now, once you have your financing put in place, you've got your capital stack figured out. It's really on you as a fiduciary to the business, to your partners and to your investors to manage the accounting and the business properly. At the end of the day, it's essential for you to manage the capital contributions, what's come into the business, and then also how to manage the distributions going back out to your partners and to your investors. I'll give you an example that I'm literally going through today with my own business. I know we had a great month, a fantastic month. I also know that our expenses are going up because of interest rates, because of 
hiring new people because of new marketing campaigns. And I got to go to my partner and say, hey, do we have enough money to make a profit distribution where we're actually getting paid this month? At the end of the day, the only reason any of us are starting an LLC, we're starting a business, is you want to grow or protect your financial well-being and it doesn't happen automatically by having a business or by having an LLC. Again, it's always comes down to competently, smartly managing the money in the LLC for the purpose of maximizing the distributions or dividends or profit payments. They all mean the same thing at the end of the day. It is, do you have a profit at the end of your time period to pay out to yourself, your partners, and your investors. When it comes to the capital contributions, you know, we talked a little bit about the initial capital contribution, which is let's get the business to the starting line. But that actually doesn't mean at the end of the day how much money you need to reach your break-even point. You need to determine not only the how much, but when your investors, your partners, in an LLC, your members will have to contribute money to make sure that your business plan is fully funded and moving up forward. And the capital contributions, it can actually refer to different things. Most of the time we're talking about cash. Cash is king. You need it to buy lots, but it's not at the end of the day the only thing that is a contribution. If you're doing a deal, and we do these all the time, where somebody is contributing an easy example, a piece of real estate or a vehicle, a tow truck, that is intrinsically necessary for that business to move forward, that's a capital contribution. It may not be cash, but there is a value being contributed to the LLC that has some sort of value to it. And now it's up to you with your partners or with who is contributing it to come up with a fair market value for what's actually getting put into the LLC. It's really important that it is a fair market value so that it deals with the taxes. You can start writing it off and depreciating it. And the contributing partner has the value of their contribution plugged in as part of the capital account. And then the last type of capital contribution, sweat equity. What services are being provided by you? Or it doesn't have to just be you. We've done lots of deals where we'll come in as a consultant to help organize and set up the plans and the process for the businesses. And for that, there's a value that is being contributed and we may say that, well, we're only going to take a carried interest. A carried interest means what is a non-financial or property contributor going to be able to write off? But if you're doing services as a contribution, generally there's some valuation that gets tied to it, at least to determine what percentage ownership is fair and reasonable for you to receive. Then when we talk about the distribution, the reason why we're all getting into actually business is you have to think about the frequency, the rules, and the procedures for how to distribute process. When it comes to distributions, it's really important for you to think about, and this is all within the operating agreement, the frequency, the rules, the procedures for how you're going to distribute the profits to yourself, as well as any other partners or investors that are coming to the table. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of the secret sauce for how we start with kind of developing distributions for any type of investment that we focus on. And in the real estate world, this is very common, where you have a preferred return, meaning like it's kind of like an interest rate that gets applied to cash that gets contributed. And then there's a profit share besides that. The reason why it's like an interest rate, but not. If you are unable to pay this preferred return, 
generally it gets accrued or it gets waived. At the end of the day, you know, it, it is a more valuable to the investors component of an investment because it's a prioritization of return to them based on paying in their profits or paying in their cash. Now, a lot of the ways that we start, we'll call it a 7% preferred return, a 50-50 profit split, but they're like levers. The, as the preferred return goes up, usually the profit split goes down. And vice versa, as the preferred return goes down, usually the profit share goes up. What should that profit split be? It's going to be whatever makes sense to your investors to take on the risk for the anticipated reward of making the investment. I've done plenty of these in a business area that there's a profit split of 20%. But there's always some preferred return or other prioritization to make sure that the investors are always receiving a reasonable return on their investment. Now, once the distributions have been figured out and how often, all of which goes into the operating agreement, the next step is how to allocate for taxes, how the profits get allocated. And I can tell you that everybody thinks oh, well, I received $100, I should get taxed on $100. That's generally not the way partnership taxation works with an LLC. And partnership taxation is the default taxation method that is usually used in all tax filings. This is where, again, working with a smart, experienced legal counsel that understands your business and how it works will really make a massive difference in paying taxes or allocating taxes because if this happens all the time, constantly, if there's profit in the LLC and you agree to, we're just going to reinvest and grow, we're not going to do a distribution, guess what? That doesn't change the tax allocation where the investors and yourself may actually be paying taxes on something on funds that you didn't receive. And we call that a phantom income tax. Again, really important to consider and talk with your tax attorney, tax CPA, and your corporate attorney to make sure that you're taking that into account with how you're structuring your operating agreement and your operation. All right, so we dove in a little bit deeper into the capitalization and financing. Today, we've covered the initial capital contribution requirements and figuring that out, different types and sources of financing for you to consider, how really your personal and business credit considerations work out when you're trying to talk about and figure out the capital stack for your LLC, and then really the managing your capital contributions as a fiduciary. A fiduciary means you're doing it on behalf of, in a position of trust, your partners and your investors, and how all that ties into ultimately the most important thing for your investors, how distributions work. Now, careful financial planning, effective management of the capital are some of the most important, crucial steps for you to start your business and ramp it up. And this is how.